So it's been a while since we've done any microcontroller videos, and that's not because Sergey hasn't been pumping them out. He has actually completed the entire series. So if you want to get a head start, go to circuitbread.com. He has all of the tutorials up there, um, and they're quite, quite fascinating. But this is a tutorial about an RC car. So we use the SMARS module car that you can find online. You can just Google it, or it's on Thingiverse, and you can just download it and 3D print it. And this is the basic, basically the foundation that you can use to create um, your own RC car. So the thing is, is I really, really stink at 3D printing, and I hadn't 3D printed anything on my printer for a while, and my settings are terrible. So this, this is kind of embarrassing. So I, I decided to keep this because I was like, well, this will show people how terrible it can be, yet still successful. And then I'll show you a clip of Sergey showing his off, which works phenomenally better than mine. Oh, yeah, even wires are coming out right now. Let's, let's get that fixed. OK, so one of the things that I, I want to go over is you have the chassis. So this is the physical chassis that you 3D print. And you can see pretty obviously that it's all 3D printed. Now, we did a continuous servo. Um, conversion video and that was actually in preparation for this because I took both of these servos and I turned them into continuous rotation servos and now they are what is driving this so if you don't know how to do that go and check it out we tried to make that as useful as possible and hopefully you do find it useful but that is the premise of this is just you've got these two servos driving these front wheels and then they're tracked to turn these now if you jump on to the tutorial, he gives some tips and tricks that I did not follow well enough. But one of the things is the hubs that come off of this center base, make sure that you sand them extremely well and that you slightly grease them as well. And it'll make it so it moves quite a bit more. I have done that. And so now it moves a little bit better, but it still stinks. And I think it's because this front piece I printed wrong, honestly. It was a real pain. But I, I don't want to get into my own issues. Um, hopefully yours goes smoother than mine and it was just another testament to me of why Sergey is one of the smartest guys I've ever worked with. In terms of the electronics though, this is actually one of the more straightforward tutorials we will have in a long time because we are basically using the servo tutorial that we've already gone over to drive these continue rotation, continuous rotation servos because it's the same concept, but instead of finding a specific point, they rotate continuously either forward or backwards depending on the pulse given them. And then also the UART um, tutorial because we are using the, the bit banging UART that we created to communicate with this. This is an HC-06 Bluetooth module. And so basically what we are doing here is we are creating a microcontroller uh, well, not creating, we're using the microcontroller to talk to a tablet via the Bluetooth module here. Now the HC06, which I did not realize until I was trying to work on this and couldn't figure out why, does not work with iPads or iPhones. So there are other options out there if you need to and if you don't have access to anything. Fortunately, Laren lent me his Samsung Android-based um, tablet, and so I used this here but I've never used these things before, so that was also quite the learning experience for me. So all in all, this was quite the experience for me. There's a couple of other things that I want to say before we jump into the code itself, is the HC06, even though it can handle up to six volts on the power supply, the transmission and receipt is, uh, transmit and receive ports can only go up to 3.3 volts. However, since the only thing we're worrying about is this module sending signals to the microcontroller, it submits the signals at 3.3 volts and the microcontroller can read it, but we're not sending anything at 5 volts from the microcontroller back to the module, so it's okay. But just be aware that if you take this, as you definitely should, and make any modifications or try to improve it or do whatever you want, make sure that one, you don't input 5 volts to those uh, to the input on this or else you're going to hurt it. Two, if you change it so you're, um, you're using a different pin to communicate with it, uh, make sure that you're not using one of the programming pins from the, uh, the Picket programmer, because when that's programming the microcontroller, it gets up to 12 volts. And so if you don't disconnect the wires when you program it, you are definitely going to fry this module. So keep that in mind when you are doing these things. But other than that, especially with this 
setup, which is a holy mess. Should be straightforward, should be good to go. Again, schematics are on the website. We might have even popped it up on the screen at some point while I was talking. I don't know. Oh, and one other thing that I forgot. For some reason, with the right servo on pin 5, I had to disconnect that to program it. Otherwise, it threw up some errors um, with my IP lab, MP Lab IPE. So that's another thing. If you're trying to program it and you're getting all these errors, try to disconnect that servo, see if that helps. OK, with that, let's jump into the code. OK, so as we jump into the code, uh, the first part should be quite straightforward. We basically have the configuration. We have a couple of variables and other things that we're putting in there. And then you jump into the initialization on line 11, where you're enabling uh, your different GPIOs. And then in line 16 and 17, we clear the servos, uh, server 1 and server 2, because we basically want to make sure that the RC card doesn't just start going randomly as soon as you turn it on without receiving any controls. But then you jump in, and this looks kind of crazy. From 18 to 24 is the entirety of the main loop. Um, so that seems quite, quite short. But again, you're jumping into a lot of different subroutines. So it's not such a, it's not as simple as that may seem at first. So as we go through, basically what we're doing is we're checking to see if the server one is not stopped, as it says there. And then we jump into the subroutine control servo. So on the control servo subroutine, your very first thing is trying to see if timer zero is zero. If it's not, you jump to set pulse. If it is, what you're doing is you're taking GP0 and GP2 and setting them high. Now the reason you're doing this is because timer zero, we've set it up and ideally it'd be 20, sec 20 milliseconds in length, but in reality it's going to be closer to 33 milliseconds with the way we have it set up. But we have this pulse that's 33 milliseconds in length, and we know that depending on how we want our servos to turn, that we need to send them a, um, a high pulse between 1 and 2 milliseconds long. So what you're doing is, at the beginning when timer 0 is 0, you're making GP0 and GP2 high, and then when you come back and you check that again and say, OK, timer 0 is no longer 0, you jump down to set pulse, and at this point, what you're doing is you're comparing the length of time that timer zero has been going from that zero point and compare it to your um, servo one and servo two variables. And so we will talk about where those numbers come from in a second. But as soon as timer zero is equal to servo one, then you drop that output GPIO. And same thing, as soon as timer zero is the same as servo two, you drop that output GPIO. In that way, you of that 33 milliseconds, you know exactly how long has been high, and then the rest of it is low. So that is what you're doing in the in 26 through 42 with the control servo and the set pulse. So with that, you might wonder, hey, where are we getting that servo one and servo two variable? Where are we getting those numbers? Now that is actually coming from the Bluetooth module. Now in line 44, uh, all the way down to 62, that is something that we already learned in the UART tutorial about how we are receiving data. So I'm not going to go into depth on that. But from 44 to 62, we're receiving the data. And that data is basically going to give us a number between 1 and 9. Now after this, from 63, you can see check left, and that goes down to 72. Now 63, it says move literal, or excuse me, in 64, it says move literal to W register, working register, 1. And then you compare the incoming data with 1. And if it's not a match, then you jump down to 72 and check forward. And you do the same thing to check forward. Hey, is it 2? If it's a match, then you go through and you perform the, um, the instructions. Otherwise, you go to check right. And then you go check backwards. Now, as you look at this, uh, and I will use check forward as an example. So on line 72, check forward. And you're comparing the incoming data with the number 2. And if it does match, then you go to 77, where you're moving the literal um, decimal 8 into, um, into servo 1, and you're moving the literal uh, decimal 10 into servo 2. And then you're jumping back up to the main loop, where you go through, you call control servo, and then in 26, you notice that timer 0 is not 0. So you jump down to set pulse. And then in there, you see, hey, does that value that I just got from servo 1 and servo 2, does that match timer 0? 
and depending on how it responds, it either leaves it high or it drops down. And it compares and does that loop again until you send another value from, the, uh, from your device via the Bluetooth. And that's how it goes from uh, 63 of check left, check forward, check right, check backward, check stop, uh, all the way down. That's all it's doing. And the rest of it from 111 down is all just a bunch of delays. We've gone over delays and I'm not going to go into it. But that's, that's all that's going on in here. So we're basically just, again, using that UART tutorial and that um, servo continue, or that servo tutorial and putting them together to make it so we can control this with this. Okay, so with that, let's jump back into the real world. And on my tablet, I have downloaded the app Arduino Bluetooth Controller. As I open this up, let me turn this on. So now this has gotten power. You can see the servos twitch just a little bit when I turned on, but it's not going. And then you can see a light blinking right there showing that it hasn't paired yet. So I've already paired in the past, so it's here. I'm not gonna go into the um, the way you do this. It's actually explicitly done on circuitbread.com on this tutorial. So again, you can go check that out if you have any questions on how to use this app or which app to use. But then I connect in controller mode. And this is where you're going to see exactly how terrible my, uh, <laughs> my end result was. So let me hold this up a little bit so it can actually uh, at least go a little bit forward. But now as I press forward, it should be going forward. It's not though. It's going the other way. Oh, maybe I'm just holding this backwards because now it's going forward. Now it's going left. You can see like it's just really struggling and that is that way. Oh, there we go. Now it's going directly. Now the way this is set up, and I'm sorry, I'm being really spastic here, is um, then you have the X to stop it. But now you can see how it goes. Let's see. Let's flash up really quick what this should look like. So let's show what uh, Sergei's looks like. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's, that's how cool it should be. And I'm really thinking since we have a couple more tutorials that we want to do with this one, I think I'm going to just reprint it out and try it again and hopefully do a lot better job the next time. But yeah, yeah, that's basically it. Again, use this as an example of if you do a terrible job, don't feel too bad. I did a terrible job as well. And then you can see Sergey's to see exactly what it should look like when everything is done ideally. So that's, that's really it, the RC car. Again, this is just one of those things where it's kind of fun to make a more practical version. And as we improve on this and we put different sensors on this, we can also make it a lot smaller. Again, this is, for me, this is very much lab ready, not anything that I'd want to play with. I'd want to condense everything down and have it separate battery. And those are totally things I strongly recommend you do um, because I'm going to have to pretty soon. But hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that was interesting. I'm trying to get back and get all of these tutorials done that Sergey has put out, but he is just a, he's a madman. He can make these tutorials faster than I can make videos on them. So I'm very impressed. In the meantime, again, go jump and check out his written tutorials if you don't want to stop, but just because I haven't gotten through all of them. If you like this video, subscribe, all those sort of things. Have a great one. We'll see you in the next one.